coming up on Out and About Art. I'm highlighting just a few of the holiday events that are happening in our art community. There's plenty to see, so stay tuned. Welcome to Out and About Art. I'm your host, Dion Spires. This month, I'm doing my best to bring you some holiday cheer from our local art community, and I'm kicking things off with a doubleheader. Ten Rock High School, located right here in Lakeland, hosted not one, but two holiday events in their art department earlier this month. It all started off in the morning with their Winter Fest, which was an event that allowed art students to showcase the work that they've been creating in their art classes, as well as gain valuable experience in selling their work. Later on in the evening, their theater department got involved with their performance of a production titled The Greatest Gifts, A Christmas Celebration. It was complete with an audience sing-along and fun activities for children and families alike. Check out some footage from the events. This is our third year doing Winterfest. Winterfest is a local community arts and crafts festival that we started here at Tenor Rock and we are trying to showcase our student artwork and then invite in other local artists to come in. I've had great response from other high schools in the area. Sometimes the teachers will come out and show their personal work, or they'll bring work from their other students. We'll also have independent um, artists come out. We also have small businesses that come in and sell their arts and crafts as a promotion for their business. It's just about bringing people together to shop small and to help promote arts in Lakeland. I had students that were needing money for different activities around the season and we're in a high poverty area so a lot of times they didn't have any way to make money. If they can't find a job this is something that they can always create and help out. That was really, really important to me, that they understand that their work is valid, that their work is valued, and that people will exchange money for their talent. I did Winterfest last year. It was my first year actually at Tenor Rock because I moved schools and I did really well last year, so I wanted to do it again. I was kind of nervous my first time because just having all of my stuff just spread out for everyone to see. But having people compliment it and kind of eased my fears. <laughs> it, was, it was a really unique thing because as an artist, it's important to be able to learn how to sell your art. And so I got to learn a lot about pricing art and what's a good range for that. And also like, getting a little better at interacting with people so I could actually be outgoing enough to go sell my stuff. It's been so exciting for them and um, they love it because they've figured out kind of how art shows work and they've also understand now the idea of the art trade which has been a huge thing for them that they are not only seeing that their art that they create has monetary value and is valued by people other than them but that other artists are willing to trade their work for them. So not only are they making money, but they're also then collecting art and being validated by other members of the community. They're so excited when anyone purchases their artwork. As an artist myself, I'm excited when anybody purchases my artwork, but to get that lesson to kids is so, so important. Having this experience, just that thrill of someone does purchase an art piece, like even if it's just a family member or maybe a friend of yours, that thrill just gets you interested in it anyway and just knows that you're in that area where you're able to sell your pieces and that you're good enough for this so you might have a future. It just, it just rises the hope of people.
Most people who are involved with art seem to be like creative in their own thoughts and they have like a large imagination and um, art just is a great way to explain the personality or the emotions of that person and it just shows like what they're capable of and just their skills because not every skill can be found or actually seen. So with art, it's a great way to just express yourself and your creativity and just see like if you have a possibility with this in the future. Art for me has always been an outlet of self-expression. With art, I've been able to get through tough spots in my life. It's important for kids to be able to have somewhere to go when they have nowhere else. As long as Winterfest continues to service our population and is supported by the community, I will continue it. I think it's so important for the kids to have this outlet and the validation for their work in addition to the monetary benefits for them. So as long as people keep coming and as long as students want to do it, we will do it here at Tenor Rock. Hello, and welcome to Tenor Rock's The Greatest Gifts, A Christmas Celebration. Months ago, as a class, we sat down at a, in a circle in a classroom and wrote on the whiteboard, what are the true meanings of Christmas? And that's what we want to give you guys today. A sense of joy that it's not all about giving. And most of all, if you guys aren't having a good day, a good week, or even a good month, a sense of hope. This is the first year we've done a Christmas celebration. Um, so this was something new for us. And at the end of last year, we wanted to really look at kind of something a little bit different. We did some really heavy pieces last year and kind of wanted to lighten it up. We came together as a class, and it was close to Christmas time. It was in October. We wrote down on the board, in our opinions, what the true meanings of Christmas were. Some relating to hope, happiness, the religious parts of Christmas. And we took those ideas and the true meanings that we put down and we made monologues, we made scenes out of it, we made pantomimes out of it. We came together and some of them being very original pieces, some of them being memories of past Christmases of the class that I have right now. We wanted to create our own pieces. To be honest, it was something that uh, my wife really was supporting me on and something to really kind of bring out the kids' stories. That's something I really want the students to be able to do, to take ownership of the shows, to not only just get up there and act, but to speak to the audience, to you know go through the whole spiel of what you see at the beginning of a show, of what it's about, to really take the ownership of their own show. I love that, you know, being that he just didn't give us things himself and then we just got to tell him everything that we wanted to do, that was great. Like, we had our, we put our own opinion. That made it our show. Because usually if he just tells us to do something, yeah, we're going to do it and we're going to do it great, but then it's not as much feeling and meaning into it because we weren't, ourselves weren't actually doing it. We, we made the show and it was great. Before we prepared everything, um, it was a lot of talking to people, getting really close and personal with our classes and even teacher. Um, it was a very nice and very close experience. It was really, I was surprised at kind of a challenging job to get the students just to talk directly to the audience, to be sincere, not to act, not to perform, but just to tell their own stories. Um, that was actually one of the most surprising things that was difficult. But as we worked through, the students and I both learned that just being comfortable telling a story was something that on theater is actually one of the most awkward things to do. Um, we're not being another character, we're being ourselves. So to be comfortable with an entire audience and just talking to them um, was a lot of fun and it was a fun challenge. So In my opinion, I think the true Christmas is having hope 
The true meaning of Christmas to me is basically just being able to spend time with one another. Even though many people can't share that moment and many's lost loved ones and all, it's still great to be able to remember them, have memories, being able to laugh, have fun. For me, it's family. And that's really what I was hoping to create here. Um, not only a, a family that we go home to, but the family on stage. A family is knowing that you can yell and you can have an argument, but they're gonna be there to have your back. And that's what it is with theater. Just like with any family at Christmas time, it all comes together about love and support. And that's what we hope to give the audience. Just some love, some community, some fun. This is a great program. I mean, like, drama is like, it's a family here. If you're in this class, you get, you know, these are people that you can spend your moments with and you can talk to about anything. So it's a great program to be in. This is a great class. Being able to learn how each other felt did bring a lot to the show. At the start of the year, it's a class. Students are thrown in there together, not really knowing each other. Um, but there were really touching moments when students got to share their stories. Um, some of them didn't make it on stage because they were just too personal. Connecting with an audience, connecting with the students to tell their own stories, um, that, is, that is something I would like to continue. I know we're definitely going to be doing uh, some Christmas productions next year. I'm not sure to the extent, um, but I already have some ideas involved. Um, and with what the audience said, it was a lot of fun. So this is something that I would like to see happen year after year. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Merry Christmas. Tenor Rock had a great turnout for both of their events this year, but if you missed these ones, be sure to keep up with their website for upcoming events and their art, music, and theater departments. Now this next event is one of my favorite ones of the holiday season, and it brings us out here to Bartow at the Polk County History Center. Every year, the History Center hosts its Festival of Wreaths, inviting members of the community to create wreaths for others to enjoy. This year was the sixth annual Festival of Wreaths. Take a look at some of the wreaths that were auctioned off and some background on the event. The Festival of Wreaths began many years ago with the Bartow Chamber of Commerce. The Bartow Chamber of Commerce, working with their members, businesses in the community, developed a program every year that was the Festival of Trees. And everybody would bring in their Christmas tree and set it up in this building. And that went on for several years. I think it actually did change in the later years to a wreath festival. So during the time that I came to the museum and we were celebrating the period of the sesquicentennial of the county, the 150th anniversary in 2011, we wanted to think of all kinds of different opportunities to bring people to the History Center to learn about Polk County history. And of course, the holiday season is a perfect time for people to come and enjoy this beautiful architecture and learn a little bit about history. So we contacted the chamber and asked permission to take ownership of that event. And then in that year, 2011, we launched the Polk County History Center's Festival of Wreaths. When we put out the call for wreath makers, one of the things that we don't do is assign a specific theme. Uh, what we find is that people are very, very creative, um, and it's usually interesting to see what kind of comes back. This year with the Festival of Wreaths, one of the things we instituted was a, a wreath makers workshop, and we brought Harriet Rustin uh, from the Davenport Historical Society, and she kind of gave us a 101, or um, wreath making 101, and it was, you know, how do you, uh, put ribbons on, what type of extra little spires and everything make the wreath kind of go from a wreath to like a wreath. Um, and so that was something that we're really excited about and that we want to continue because um, it gives us an opportunity to take the wreath, the festival of wreaths and make it a community engagement event with our wreath makers as well as the people who come in to uh, view the beautiful wreaths. 
It's always fun for us to stand back and watch the expressions on people's faces because of course the wreaths are decorated by amateur designers and they're all different. They come from many different types of organizations and many different levels of talent. And just the really nice thing about it is the variety that we can display. And with the many doors that are available, with two floors in the museum, we wind up with about 40 wreaths every year, all different styles and designs. And I think people really enjoy walking through that and experiencing the different types of wreaths. The most precious thing about the Festival of Wreaths is adorning this beautiful building. It is a beautiful piece of architecture. One of the things that's always asked about is the stenciling throughout the uh, hallways and the dome, the interior dome of the museum. Invariably, every year, more than 10 people will say to me, do you add the stencils just for this time of year? And there's just something about having the wreaths in place and the color and the, the feeling of the holiday season people notice that there are stencils around and they do look very festive. I love that. That's exciting. What it is is it's actually an original feature of the building. Uh, when they rediscovered the uh, blueprints for the building during the uh, preservation phase in the 90s, they found that the blueprints called for this stenciling that you'll see if you come down here and it was never done. So the restoration or the preservation architect took a look actually at the museum tile and saw that the museum tile featured um, mostly tones of green, red, yellow, and orange. And so they came up with that stenciling color. And so it's twofold. It gets people really excited about the holidays, but it gives us an opportunity to discuss the architectural significance of some of the features um, inside the building. <laughs> We did something different this year and invited on the evening, the opening reception, the Frostproof Choir to listen to beautiful voices sing on the second floor of the building in the rotunda and the music that just immersed us in, oh, just the joy of each song, the beauty of each song and these youthful voices, very talented, very talented young um, students. That was really special this year. I could not describe truthfully and faithfully and do the mini justice what it sounds like um, any time that we have singers face the rotunda upstairs and sing a cappella. It carries through the building and it was, I think for me, truly a Christmas feeling, but it was also a wonderful sense of artistic power. The Festival of Reese provides for us an opportunity to decorate the museum for the holiday season. We can provide an opportunity for all the citizens of the county to come in and enjoy the beauty of the building and the beauty of the wreaths. So we, we plan to continue the event year after year. It's delightful for us. Now across the county in Lake Wales, Warner University hosted their annual holiday performance from their music department at the Polk State College Lake Wales Art Center. Now, Christmas music is my favorite part of the holiday season, so that was an event that I was very excited to attend. It featured vocal ensembles performing a variety of holiday classics. Here's some footage from the event. It is called a Royal Christmas. We were Warner University of the Royals, and so predominantly sacred music, Christmas music to celebrate the season. I think we have only one piece that would be considered secular. That's probably more of who we are at Warner. Some of the best, greatest music written was sacred, so that's why we're doing more of that. quite a few different styles actually and it's really great that we're not doing like all the same stuff because it gives you a break from kind of having this feel of oh my gosh I don't really like this style so when you don't really like a song you can kind of 
find one that you do like and just say, okay, we'll get through this one and I can do that one. Most of it's more modern, can, modern classical. Probably the oldest thing we're doing is foom, 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 an old French or Catalan carol. It's probably 400 years old, but most of them are more modern pieces written by composers and musicians that are still alive today. We've stayed away from some of the big masterpiece works. Not that they're bad, but for who we are right now, that seems to fit us. I really enjoy the Latin pieces because they're more classical usually and it's got the more, mm, I don't want to say classical feel, but like just what you would expect to hear in music. But I also enjoy the contemporary pieces because they have these really interesting chords and the progressions that aren't really expected, but it just makes you appreciate the music even more because you're like, Whoa, I totally wasn't expecting that, but that's totally beautiful. And um, in the gospel team, we're actually doing two a cappella pieces, which is really cool because we have to rely on each other and really focus in on what we're doing and know our pieces well enough to be able to do it without the music. I think when we do multiple styles, it doesn't just give you a better show, but it builds you as a musician to make you more capable to do things later in life, which is really great. We started preparing our pieces at the beginning of the semester and uh, we kind of lis listen to it and we work on parts with uh, our accompanist and uh, then we, we try to work on our parts and we, we listen to the music when we're at home and stuff and just preparing and he always makes sure we know our parts and he helps us if we don't know a certain area and it's just great. In choir literally all we've done this semester is the music that we're performing tonight so what you hear has been a full semester long process. And for the gospel choir, um, we, we also sing in chapel. So we had to work on some like chapel type music for us to like, lead worship. But uh, we really started with Christmas music probably early October. So we've been working on it quite a while. But since two of our three pieces are, are a cappella, we, um, we've had to work really hard on them. And it's really tedious and we have to sit down at the piano and just play parts over and over and over again and we're like, oh my gosh, you'd think we'd get this by now. It just, it grows you and stretches you sometimes. It makes the experience in the end a whole lot better when you can look back and say, look at all this work we did. And even though it was only for an hour and a half show, it, it all paid off in the end. <laughs> So we have a, quite a diverse group. We do have music majors, obviously, in our group, which bring a, a little bit of knowledge and experience to, the, to what we do. But we also have students who are involved in music, maybe had some high school experience, not much. We have students who also have never sung in a choir, who now want to be a part of a worship ministry, or they were in marching band all their life. Now they're singing in the choir, so it's kind of a new experience. So we have a lot of a broad, uh, experiences. Some of them don't know even how to read music, so they guess on the notes based on what their ear tells them, and whereas I'm more of a reading music and following the music, and it's, it's very helpful for me because I don't have as good of an ear, and it's, it's, 
it help, we help each other a lot and even though they aren't as comfortable at first, they end up being a huge asset to our team and a huge help with just everyone else. I hope the audience takes away a deeper appreciation for the music and that they realize that the Christmas season isn't about buying presents and wrapping them and making everybody happy and cooking the meals, but it's about taking time to reflect on things that are important and focusing on why we're here and what God's done for us. I really hope they will go away seeing that uh, they can worship with us and that we'll be able to exude uh, who Christ is through ourselves and what we do on stage and what we sing about. The message of the birth of Christ, the manger, that he came for us and that brings joy and that we would exhibit that in our music and that they would experience that message and understand why we're singing those songs. The, the other message was, would be that they experience just the beauty of the music. And both of those are really woven together. So if we do our job well, and they sing the way we're supposed to sing, the, the audience will, I think, be moved musically, but also get a message of the real meaning of Christmas. And that's what we're really we're trying to get across. We do have spring performances and uh, occasionally other groups like our ensemble will go out and travel um, throughout the semester. Just come and check us out and come, come hear what we have all been working on and uh, we just we love music and we love just being able to share our music with the community and we, we want to share it with you guys and want to be able to help get our name as, a, as Warner out there but also going to get Jesus' name out there. And, Please come check us out. To keep up with Warner University and all of the happenings on their campus, visit www.warner.edu. That's all I have in store for this month, but the holiday fun definitely is not over. There are plenty of events still happening across the county, so stay tuned for a list to see what you can attend with some family and friends. As always, thank you so much for joining us, and happy holidays from all of us here at Out and About Art. We'll see you next year.